guys, it's Kelly with Embroidery Nurse. So today, I'm going to be making my applique shirt for my Sam's Club, which is my surprise applique of the month club. And y'all, I'm so excited. This one, I really love fast stitch outs, like things that I can just pop on the machine, come back 18 minutes later, pop it off, and we're done. This is not one of those projects. I'm actually making a 3D embroidery shirt. What? Yes, 3D. So let me tell you the story about this. I certainly these days look for more faster stitch outs. A lot of them are so super cute. They're, you know, new, they're out there. You know, you haven't seen a lot of them because digitizers are making them left and right because they're the thing right now, right? But this design that I got for Easter, I probably bought it a couple of years ago. It was one of those designs that I kind of tucked away and was like, I can't wait to make that. But then, because sometimes my planning wasn't really on point, Easter would come and go. And I'm like, I forgot to make that shirt and add it to my site. So this year, when I was making out my list of things that I was going to make for my Sam's Club, I was like, without doubt, we are making that bunny shirt. Are you all ready? Okay. Dun, da, 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 da. Dun, dun, dun. Y'all, stop it. How stinking cute is that? Now, I pinned it just for effect, so obviously it wouldn't stay like that, but look at that. It is an applique that has 3D bunny ears. Stop it. And so I put the name of the child on the ear. What? Can you just imagine a little kid walking around all day like, da, 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 look at me, look at me, Peter Rabbit. Anyway, how fun is that? So the girls version I'm doing with pink seersucker, because you guys know I love me some seersucker. And then the boys I'm going to be doing um, kind of matching. What well, is matching? It just doesn't have, what's different about the girl? So the girl has, um, you see my printout, has eyelashes and... Yeah, that's the only difference. The girl has eyelashes and the boy does not. Uh, but I'm going to do the boy in blue seersucker and the girls in pink seersucker. You guys, I mean, seriously, how cute is that? I mean, look at it from the side. I mean, can you just imagine a little kid like on the playground? Like, da, 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 da. So, super excited. We're going to go through the steps of how to make this today. It, it does take a little bit longer. It's more than just a simple one-step process because we've got to... Um, you know, make the ears first, and then we have to attach it to the shirt, and then do the whole applique. And of course, it's all side and stitch. So to me, that just takes longer. But it was too cute not to do this year. Super excited about it. So let's get to it. Okay, let's get started. So the things that we need, um, and we're going to use two different hoop sizes, because one we're going to use to make the ears, and then one we're going to use for the um, actual t-shirt. So I use my Jerky 9x9, and then for the ears, we're just going to use what came with my Baby Lock machine, which is a 5x7. I'm going to use three different pieces of fabric, two for each shirt. That's it. So for the girl shirt, for the girl bunny, I'm going to be using Pink Seersucker. And then I have this really cute gray minky dot fabric. And then for the boys, I'll be using the matching blue Seersucker with the gray pink, no, the gray minky dot fabric. So we will also be using on the shirts, we'll be using our just regular um, no-show poly mesh, which is um, what I use on all my shirts. And then um, I, I will be putting the backing, um, which is Tender Touch on the back of my shirts so they're not scratchy to the child wearing it. I will be using Tearaway Stabilizer when I'm making the ears because those aren't going to be worn and we want to get that stabilizer out of there so it doesn't, um, you know, crinkle or anything when it's being worn. And then I will be doing Heat and Bond Light on um, really everything just so that it, it, you know, cuts out real nicely and doesn't, um, doesn't leave behind any extra um, threads and it just forms to the shirt. Even though it's minky, I'm still using it because it's just easier to cut it when I feel like when it has heat and bond light on it. And then of course we'll be using the shirt um, and let's just get to it, right? So we're going to do, the next one we're going to do is for a little girl and her name is Emma. So the first thing we're going to put our um, Tear 
Airway stabilizer in the hoop. And so all we're doing is hooping the, the tear away. We're not hooping anything to it because it's basically like an in the hoop project. We're doing an in the hoop, making our ears. Um, because what we'll do is we'll, um, well, I'll show you, but we're going to put the item, the fabric down, we'll stitch the name on it. And then we're going to put the wrong side of the other fabric face down. And so then we're going to flip this once we're done, then we'll attach it to the shirt as the first step of just the regular applique process. So I'm just hooping one piece of tear away and I'm tighten that up since that's all it's got on there is the stabilizer. And then I do need to prepare the actual fabric. And so what I need to do, get all this extra stuff out of the way first is get my pink fabric and then my minky dots, because we're doing a curl shirt to start. Mainly because I have more of those and I already have the pinks loaded up on my machine. So I use the uh, printout that I printed from Brilliance to determine how much fabric that I'll need. So this is for the actual bunny. So I'm gonna grab my pink seersucker first. And based on the number that I have to do today, I'm going to just go ahead and pre-cut my stabilizer, or I'm sorry, my um, fabric. So that way for each shirt, I don't have to come back and, you know, recut it because that gets time consuming. And so I have a one, two, three, four, about three more to do because I already did Sweet Penny. Penny was my first. So I've got three more to do girls. So I'm going to cut out the fabric specific to that. Y'all, I mean, I... So cute. You're going to want to make this. I mean, if you don't want to add it to your shop because it takes a little bit longer, I get that. But you're going to want to make this for just somebody, right? I mean, seriously. Too cute. So I've got my iron heating up. And now we are going to just cut this ear sucker to size. So I'm going to go ahead and cut three pieces so that we'll have that all the same size. I don't know why the, the process of like, you know, cutting the fabric, adding the heat and bond light. Um, if I do it, like I said, all at once, then it just, it doesn't seem like it takes, and it really doesn't take a long time, but you know, any, any little extra step that I can go ahead and do in advance, um, just makes things a little bit more enjoyable, enjoyable to me when I get to the actual process of making the shirt. I like just to keep it rolling, cutting off that extra edge on the end of the, the fabric. So I've got those three. And then I also have to cut out the interior pink um, fabric for um, the ears. You can get creative with this. You can do what it, it doesn't have to be, you know, pinks and blues like I've chosen. Uh, I'm definitely choosing very um, girl boy colors for this. You could do just you could you go crazy with fun fabrics to do on the inside of the ear, you know, whatever you want to do, you do colored shirts, whatever. Uh, you know, it leaves a lot of creativity up to you um, when you create any applique, really. I tend to, if I can, um, use Searsucker pretty much on anything. It is my go-to fabric. So I'm cutting the ears now in the pink. And I want to do it like this where it's the, the lengthwise. Um, I don't know why, but so I'm cutting it with the line as part of it. So I'm gonna cut three of these as well so that I can complete all three shirts. And one more. Okay, yeah, I was just so tickled when I, when I finally made this shirt. I was like, yes, yes, yes. Even though I know it takes a little bit longer than, you know, some other projects that I might be doing. I'm going to use these sized pieces right now to go ahead and cut my blue fabric. That way I'll be ready to make the boys shirt once I finish these three. I have two of these to do. So let me go ahead and get them cut and ready. Da -da -da, da -da -da. 
two. And then I also want to cut out um, the fabric for the boy ears. So it, in this file, and I'll link it um, in, in the bottom of the comments um, where you can purchase this. Uh, but in when you download this, I believe it was from Etsy. When you download it, it actually gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to make these. And it's so helpful. I mean, I did have to stare at it for a hot second just to make sure that I was doing it the right way. Uh, and that's why I did a test one. I don't always test out things um, before I get on here with you guys. But this one, I felt like, you know what? I should probably do a trial run of this just to make sure before I go live that I um, know what I'm doing. So let's see. I've got all, get that end off since it's that frayed part. I don't like that kind of. So that's for all the ears, girls and boys. And so we're done with our seersucker fabrics. And now I just need to cut our uh, minky fabric. And I need to do it the same, same way. I need to do a piece for the actual bunny itself and then a piece for the ears because you can see here the Mickey's on the back of the ear. I saw in some instances where people had done the uh, name on the outside fabric. So you can really choose, you know, what, which look you're going for. Um, I wanted to do it on the fabric so I didn't have to worry about using um, like water soluble stabilizer or anything like that, which you would want to do if you were stitching directly onto the binky. Uh, I was just trying to make it easy and I liked the way the pink kind of popped on the pink. Okay, so I just folded this over so I can just cut one at a or two at a time, make that a little quicker. And let's see, I can do that one more time right here. And then I'll cut the fabric. Well, just threw that stitch out on the ground. Um, all right. So we'll cut that one more time. It folded over on itself. I, I do love this minky fabric. I mean, minky is generally used for you know, blankets and whatnot, but it's just fun to get creative with fabrics that you have. Um, this was a bolt that I had um, purchased a while back when I had made a few blankets for some baby showers or whatnot. So I, you know, I already had this in stock and it was like, yes, that is like the perfect fabric for a bunny, isn't it? It really is. All right, so now I'm gonna cut out um, the fabric for the minky for the, um, for the ears. I already did the body. See how quickly I can lose my scissors? <laughs> They're under here somewhere. All right, so let's, I needed to cut out one more because I have five to make total today. So that is all for the bodies of our bunnies. That's for the bodies of our bunnies. And then this right here is for the ears. So I wanted to match that fabric next to this. So we cut out the right amount. So Searsucker and Minky do have something in common. I thought about that when I was getting ready to cut this stuff out. They both will flatten when you iron them. Um, so you want to be gentle in your ironing with both of these fabrics. Um, Minky is funny. It will like flatten the dots. Um, and then seersucker, it will pretty much take the seersucker straight out of it when it comes to the, you know, the grooves that will just make it a flat piece of fabric. Neither, you know, none of that is wrong. It's fine. Uh, having the flat um, seersucker actually is, is the look I was going for on there. Um, but I wanted to keep the minky dot as much as I could. You can see the minky more on the ears than you can on the bunny, but you still get the effect of the, um, the softness and the um, you know, almost fur feeling fabric on there. So I'm still happy, happy with that. But you do with those two fabrics that just, you just want to iron a little more gently, not be as heavy handed. Um, but again, the end product looks great. Even if you were to flatten, flatten it all, because it still gives the appearance of some gray bunny fur. All right. So there's four of those. 
I need one more piece. Why don't we get it out up here? So I'm not wasting any of this cutie patootie fabric. So again, this is the boring part, right? This is the not exciting part of crafting is the prep work, but without it, we would have no end result, correct? So done and done. Now I can get all my extra fabric out of the way and put back up. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out our heat and bond light. And like I said, I'm even adding it to the minky. And some people are like, wait, what? You put what? But I just want to um, make sure that it's just easier to cut. And to me, that's that's the purpose of heat and bond light. It just gives it you know, a little bit more stability and it prevents the fraying. So I put it on, I put it on any fabric I use. The only thing I don't use it for is when I'm um, using my vinyl, the embroidery vinyl. There is no need to use it for that, I promise. And you're probably saying, well, I wouldn't put it on that either, Kelly, but so be it. All right, so there is one. And here's one for the bunny and one for the ears. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this and then we're gonna take it to the machine. So the first thing we're going to do are the ears. So I already have my stabilizer hooped and I've got my one piece of minky and one piece of um, seersucker fabric that we're going to do. So we can see over here that I do already have it loaded on the machine. And so you can see that we're doing the ears and the name has already been programmed in there. You do have to add that extra to the design. You have to pick the font that you want and add it to the file that it, that it comes with it. All right, so let's get a little closer. All right, so we're all we're going to do literally is add stabilizer on a hoop, and we're going to tell it to go, and it's going to do our outline. All right, so that's going to start, and, and it's not because something wasn't in there, right? So real life, y'all. I am not trying to cut out all the problems because I think it's important to show you that we have them. So I like to include these in the videos so you don't think that everything I do is just hunky dory. So I just had to rethread that. Not sure if it just wasn't pulled all the way through. I don't know. So we're just going to go back to the beginning and say, all right, go for it. I don't know how well you'll be able to actually see it stitching because it's um, stitching in gray. <laughs> okay, so now we have the placement down for the ears and we're going to do the side that you want to have the name stitched on. So for me, I want to stitch it on our pink seersucker. So I'm just gonna lay that over and we are going to add the name.
is actually lay our, our minky fabric on top. And with this, when you're doing a project that you're doing in the hoop that you're gonna flip around, we're gonna wanna make sure that we put the right side down onto the other right side fabric because we're gonna flip this. So here's the side that's the back with the um, heat and bond light applied to it. We're gonna put the right side face down. So you can watch me do that next. And then we're gonna stitch around it to where it gets the actual ears um, right on top of that fabric. So you can see that's the wrong side facing up because we are gonna be flipping this shortly and we're gonna tell it to go. I'm just going to pop it out of our hoop here and you can see I've got it just like so. We're going to pull away all of the tear away. You don't want to leave that inside the ear and it pulls off pretty easily. You're just going to have to kind of go back around the um, name there a little bit and you don't have to get every itty bitty piece out because like I said we're turning this inside out. We won't see this side. Um, and it, depending on what kind of stabilizer that you use, what kind of tear away, some are different, um, thicknesses and whatnot. So, uh, I just try to get as much of it out that I can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut pretty close to the, um, stitching around the ears, but we're going to want to leave a bit extra at the bottom of the opening so that we can ensure that we can um, flip it. So we'll use that to help flip it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my good scissors here for my applique work. And I'm, I'm cutting it just like I would, you know, applique. You don't wanna cut that stitch though. You wanna be careful that you leave a little bit of room um, to work with. Because like I said, this is going to be flipped. So there is one ear. So one ear doesn't have any writing on the back. Now you could choose, uh, I've seen it cute where some people will put like the year. Um, they could put, you know, whatever year Easter it is. Um, or, you know, a double name or however, first, last name. I just chose to do first name like I would for any other of my other um, applique shirts. Um, and I just think it's, too cute. Okay, so got a lot of extra fabric there, but here we go. We've got two ears. So I'm going to come a little bit closer and show you how we're going to flip these around. And then we're going to get started just like any other applique and adhere these. The first couple of steps are actually adhering these to the shirt before the rest of the applique work. So the, su the suggestion was to use one of those tools that you can use to flip it, flip it inside out. I don't have one of those, or I do, I just don't know where it is. So what I did is I'm taking this, see there's both sides of it and it's inside out right now. And what, I just shimmy it. You can start at the top and I pull it apart and then I start just pushing it through. So see how I did that? I kind of pulled it apart and I'm pushing it through with my finger and honestly it works just fine it, and then if you need to adjust it then you're just going to pull it a little bit more and then push it in a little bit more and then once I get it to a point where I can grab it then I just pull it through so it's super easy you don't need any you know special fancy tools with that but that's why we leave that little bit of extra there and we're going to use this extra on the end to actually um, stitch it to our shirt so just pull it through. You can see how I've got that now. And you can just kind of get those little edges there. You, you might want that. You, you could even use just a pen um, just to make sure you have all the edges rounded off. For me, I've just found that I could um, tug and pull. And, and there we've got the good shape of our ear. Oh, that's upside down. Um, so that's it. it. It's super easy to flip it inside out. Let's do it again together. So like I said, I just take it. I pull it apart. And then I push it through with one finger and then I just take that finger and push it through like so and then do it one more time to the point where I can reach it. See, there's a little edge right there. I can just grab and I pull it back. Perfect. 
So you want to make sure you don't leave it like that. So that's what I was talking about with grabbing it. You might use a tool to push it all the way out, but um, really I'm, I've been able just to kind of grab the edge and pull up so that we don't have any of that. So there's our second year. So we've got our two years. We've got one with the name and one that's just a regular um, seersucker. So the next thing we're going to do is just follow the directions just as they've given them to us. And the very first directions are adding this to the shirt first. So now we just need to get our shirt hooped and ready. I have my little bunny printed out just like I do with all my designs. And I'm going to find the middle of my shirt here. Get me a pin. And that's at six and a half. And then I'm just going to take my design and I'm going to pin it to my shirt. I pull it down just a little bit further than um, maybe some of my designs just because we're going to have those ears up top. So I take that into account when I'm putting it on here. Um, and this is a larger shirt than this. This was a size eight. So bringing it down just a little bit more is good. But like I said, it's down a little bit further than I would generally do on my other applique work. Because like I said, I want to account for these ears being on there. So I have that. What I do with my shirts is I flip it inside out and I get my no show poly mesh here and I cut it to the size of my nine by nine jerky hoop. Need a little bit of spray adhesive, spray it straight onto the shirt there. No, I didn't. I sprayed it straight onto the um, stabilizer, but you could do either. I flip it back so my stabilizer is in place. And I'm going to take my frame here, loosen it up from our last project, slide it in and make sure that it is straight and centered with our design there that's pinned on the front. And we've got our hooped. Okay, so now we've got our bunny hooped. We're going to take it to the machine and I'm going to show you a lot closer how we actually attach the ears first, how those steps work, and um, and then we just do regular applique. So you can watch that run. What What's interesting is the, the first step is a placement stitch for the ear. The second step is the tack down step for the ear. And then the third step is actually, it does a little stitch inside the ear so that the ear kind of moves over to the side. Otherwise, it would be straight here in front of the actual bunny and you wouldn't see it when they're down. So I thought that was really creative that they added that stitch in there so that the ears do kind of flop to the outside of the rest of the applique work. That's some good digitizing right there. All right, so we'll get a little closer so you can see these next couple of steps and then you can just watch. So applique, the way it runs, if you have not done a lot of applique work, is it does a tack down stitch. I'm sorry, it does a placement stitch, and then you put your fabric on top of it, and then you it does a um, tack down stitch. Then you pull it off the machine and actually cut around the fabric, and then it does all the finishing stitches. This one is digitized to where it does all of those two things first, and at the very end, it does all of the finishing stitches. So once you get through the first early steps of the applique, you really can set it and forget it. And I do love designs that are digitized that way because it allows me to kind of work, do more work while one thing is running. So let's get going. Okay, so I have my bunny that I just have loaded on here and I've used my laser to center the design directly over my grid. It's kind of hard to see there with the, that lighting on it. Um, but I do have my grid and I've centered it and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna take my design that I pin and we've already assigned the colors to it. So we're gonna start. The first couple of things are just the placement stitch for our ears. So we're gonna let it do that for us. And it does one side at a time. It really doesn't matter which side you use um, or which ear you put on which side. So I'm going to put this over that stitch.
Now let's go to do the second ear. And we're going to add that one just the same. So now because we're going to be doing other applique work, I want to get in here and get close as I can to that stitch there. Doesn't have to be exact, but just getting rid of some of that extra fabric that's not needed on the bottom of that ear. Okay, so the next thing it's going to do is that fun little stitch that allows it, it's gonna bend outward so it doesn't cover up our bunny design once we get going. I like to use a coordinating color, so I chose the pink for this one. And like I said, it's just gonna allow it to flop the right way and so it doesn't cover up the cute bunny once it's done. So instead of it going straight down, it will kind of go down like this at an angle. Perfect. So that's it. That's the way we add our 3D design to this shirt. Now all it's going to do literally is go through just the regular applique work, just like any other applique shirt that we've done. The way this one was digitized, and since I've already done it before, I know this is how I can run it. I can actually do all the cutting in one stage, and that makes it super simple, super easy. So anytime that I can cut out a step, I certainly try. So now we're just going to cut it all out. Okay, so I just did all the cutting. And what's awesome is I literally just did cutting at one point. Because uh, I put the fabric down for the minky. And then I put the fabric over top of it for the seersucker. I pulled it off one time and cut. So how adorable is that? So it hasn't done the finishing stitch yet. So that's next. And that's where I'll add, obviously, the detail and just the nice finishing edges. But I wanted to show you up close what I was talking about with the ear flap. So... It stitched the ear on first. If it had just left it with that first stitch, the ears would have been like this, like literally covering the bunny. But the digitizer actually added this extra stitch, if you see it right here at the top of the ear, here and here. And what that allows it is it allows the, the ear to kind of hang to the side. How smart was that? And that one wants to hang up, stay up, and that's even cuter. So we've got, you know, the, the name on this side and then the others. Y'all, are you kidding me? So you do want to make sure when you put it back on the machine, that you have these out of the way. You don't want it to do any finishing stitches on that. But I'll show you what the finished product looks in a minute.
There's Emma's bunny shirt. Seriously, you guys, how cute is that? So I told you before, this is not a quick stitch by any means, but how fun is it to be able to add 3D elements to your embroidery? Ah, so it does involve in the hoop and applique work, but in the end, the product is so fun. I cannot wait for these kids to get these shirts and just see the delight. And I will hopefully share some pictures on Instagram of them wearing them. I can only imagine them just running around and flipping their ears around. It actually took 45 minutes and that was just counting the stitch time. So you have to then factor in the time that you had to heat and bond light, the time that you had to cut out your fabric, the time that you had to actually, you know, do the placement and tack down and stitching or cutting around the stitches for um, the applique work, the time it took to flip the ears in and out. So 45 minutes just of stitching and then on top of that, I would say probably 10 more minutes. This takes almost an hour to complete one of these. So if you're doing this for your business, it might not be the most economical one to do, um, just you know, based on the time. But if you're just wanting the absolute cutest, most adorable design that's unique and 3D, you guys, this is it. Absolutely love it. Absolutely worth the hour that I invested in this for these cute kids. Okay. I think now I've got four more to go. So I'm gonna get to it, but happy stitching. Let me know if you have any questions. Subscribe to see more videos and hopefully we'll stitch something together soon.